neat to see. We finally got a pretty heavy rain event. Nothing crazy, but maybe I got to look at my rain gauge. Maybe it's been an inch and a half today, um, which makes it the biggest rain event of this summer, I'm pretty sure. Um, and it's neat to see our highest swale activated. And um, it's hard to see where it is. Although now you can see with the rain, if you look carefully, but normally most people miss it. it runs right here. And then it goes right there. So collects a lot of impervious surface, um, which I'm coming to appreciate more and more as things get drier and drier, because it allows you to harvest water from certain areas. I mean, Usually our mindset is that impervious surface is, ba is bad, which in, in some ways it is. We want as much pervious surface as possible, but actually impervious surface gives us a lot of ability to catch water. See, there's a little delta forming right here um, off the old basketball court. So this swale right here, it's full of water. It's the first time I've seen really water in it the whole summer past about here. So we can keep walking, look how high the grass is. It may be hard to appreciate, but the grass is way higher in this whale. There's still water. And it's always very interesting to see how much infiltration capacity we have here. There's still water, there's a lot less of it here. And pretty much, the fence is on. There's no water here. So, it all infiltrates by about this last kind of 0% level sill area right here. So that's pretty much catching all the rest of it. I've only seen it make it out to the final level sill, which is down there. Right there, there's a couple thousand gallons can sit perfectly horizontal spillway. This is our driest, droughtiest ridge in the highest part of zone one. And then there's a lot of water coming off this 72 by 40 foot building and off the basketball court and in big, big rains off this plateau, although this is pretty sandy soil. So really interesting to see how much infiltration capacity we have. It's been dry and these soils are red, are thirsty and they're ready to soak up a ton of water. So all of this rainwater is just hydrating this dry ridge and just going in, in, in and feeding this very dry hillside where we have hickory, autumnberry, well, apple, chestnut, hickory, rubus, more hickory, more chestnut, oaks, etc., etc., as you go down the hill. And it's a poor, very dry area, just getting hydrated. So, Really neat. You, and this took me, actually, it was just a few years before I saw that this swale could fit here during a permaculture course. We were looking for a project. I was like, oh, I think we could actually get this water from here, not down there, but over out to the dry ridge. And what made me think about it harder was because we developed a spring down there and I didn't want any overflow from this area. We're at a metal shop, wood shop, people park, any of that water going straight downhill oh look there's apples for them you want to call them come on the cows come on cows come on cows come on cows come on cows so that made me think about more carefully where i didn't want the water to go which is down towards the spring and where i did want it to go and, you know, year after year, I look at water ever more carefully. I'll never be done learning about observing more, ever more carefully water flows, especially in slight landscapes where the angle is very low. That's actually the hardest place to see the flows um, is where you have the slightest grade change. Um, but you can see right here. See the water making its way down? This is the swale right here. 
And this right in here is only, you know, that there's barely a half a percent over there over at the far end. And then maybe there's like 1% here, then about zero, then about one to two, and then it finishes out at zero. We surveyed it during one of our permaculture courses and then dug it. And we actually barely were able to get it in. There's bedrock right here. You see that? That's bedrock. We were just able to scoot this around. So the first thing we had to do was assess, can we miss this? We got a benchmark elevation there and then formed up a little gravel to catch all that and curtain drain it over here. We actually, I think, had to pickaxe at some of this bedrock right there just to get it to pass. Hi to cows. Hi to mama. So neat little observation to see during the flows, the less water we get, the more carefully we need to harvest and store it. Hey, Mr. Speed. It's our new cow, Boone Speed, named after the famous rock climber. So here's the other side of this barn. Uh, not quite as impervious, but pretty damn impervious. Okay, you carry it, you got it, mister. And this actually was prone to erosion when we were doing construction in this whole area, but we got it all grassed up quickly. Come on, bring it over here. We had 20 inches of rain in six weeks during that. By the way, this is totally the way I'm storing all my wood now. That's not good. Look at, Joey, look at that, look at all this. This is our lumber growing mushrooms. That's not what we want. That's really not ideal. Here. You see, yeah. that's why you don't leave the bark on lumber. You gotta take it off. So we gotta take the, we gotta use this. This is some hemlock that's been here a couple years. Yeah. It should hold up longer than that, but. Okay, you got it, bring it over here. So this side has a bunch of bioswales because eventually all this water is in the watershed of multiple ponds. And so we wanted to you know, make sure to filter it quite heavily. Plus you want a slow spread sink water all the time anyway. And let's see if these bioswales even have much water in them. They've been empty most of the summer since like June. Okay, so there's a little couple inches, but they're not full. So, okay, hold on. So basically all the water from this whole watershed, a few acres, put it down on the ground. Then. Aren't even getting past this area and making it to the ponds. I mean, we have water coming off other buildings with roofs directly into it's the ponds. Tacos. But um, we're infiltrating tacos. all of this storm water. We would need tacos. inches of rain at this point for it to even get over land, um, which is good. Putting it all into the ground. It's the last bit of nectar for the bees. This uh, aster, just the wetlands really come in late in such a clutch way late season for the bees um, and the knotweed too. Casimir, thanks for sending that hickory and that uh, that walnut. They're doing great in this wetter area where they can survive the winters more uh, better because it's more, more moisture in the ground um, which can allow marginally hardy plants to get by further. I think that's something I'm noticing. It's 